So I will do a whole tutorial on how I built this filter um, in a future update when everything's totally done and I can draw pretty diagrams and stuff and show you exactly how it all works and how it all got built with the pictures and some of the b-roll footage that I've shot along the way. Um, but I just want to talk real quick about a few things that I did, I think I did right, and a few things that I would do over again if I could. Uh, probably the number one thing that I feel like I did right is, I made it big enough. Between this and the filter that I'll have down at the bottom of the pond, uh, I have almost 50% of the surface area of the pond covered for filtration, which is, uh, which is really good. I don't think I'll, you know, knock on wood, I don't think once the pond is mature I'll ever have a... Uh, a substantial issue with uh, with algae or water quality. Um, the other thing I did is I plumbed this all with a three inch line and gave myself multiple ways to split the flow. You know, one goes down to the bottom and I'll show you here. My first oh, shadow, it's just under this rock here. I've got a little piece of, and there's my three inch valve so I can control flow. This, this controls flow down to the bottom of this filter where the water will rise up. Um, and then it splits off, and I've got a uh, I've got a uh, anti-siphon you know buried behind this this little wall that will just spit water out. That will keep the water from flowing back to the um, to the intake if I ever lose power or have to shut off power. And then it splits into a two-inch line, which I'm running. This will get buried under the gravel. You know, see it comes out from underneath this rock. It's under the gravel. This will get buried in gravel and come back here. This rock will come out. And then I've got just a milk crate sitting back here in this, uh, in this pot. And I'm thinking I'm gonna use this pot and I'll cut the milk crate down. It won't actually be this level. Um, so this pot will get recessed. And this two inch line will come up into this pot and I'll have a little bubbling fountain in the back. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick with the, with the pot. I just had this on the deck. I've, uh, I've had it up there doing nothing for uh, two or three years or something. We never planted anything in it or whatever we planted died. Uh, so I thought, well, I could turn it into a fountain. That might work but i also everything else about this pond is pretty natural looking so i might prefer to go with a uh, like a, a drilled out bubbling rock or something but we'll see anyways being able to split the flow from here allows me to precisely control how much mo how much water is going to the bottom so i get enough dwell time coming up through the filter and then the rest of it can either go straight through here and back out or i can split it and send a little bit here and then just dump the rest out on top of the filter which will all flow down to the waterfall um, another thing that I'm glad I did is I am unbelievably grateful to have this bad boy, which we have, uh, we have dubbed Barney, uh, since he's pink and purple and <laughs> likes to, uh, likes to sing diesel songs to me all day long. Uh, it allowed me to set some really, really big rocks, you know, all over the pond. I've been using this like crazy, uh, but even back here in the filter, because I dug it, and here's one thing that I wish I'd done a little bit differently, but because I was space constrained, uh, wasn't really able to, is, you know, the filter's, the filter, filter, the filter is, uh, is just a rectangle. And so when you lay out the rock work, you know, I did the best I could to kind of take the rocks that I've got left here and, you know, turn them and twist them. So I've got, you know, going in and out. So inside the filter, you know, there's some, there's some definition to the, you know, to the shape of the filter, but outside, you know, it's really still just a, a rectangle. Uh, I think I can fix that with uh, placing a few character boulders, you know, outside and kind of tying it into the landscaping and, you know, planting some, you know, like a juniper bush or something, stuff that just flows over the top of the rocks will fill it in. I think it'll look great in the end, but uh, one thing I wish I would have done differently if I had more space is once I finish digging this excavation, uh, it would be to have a, had a bigger liner and more space to dig a shelf outside of the line or outside of the filter but inside of the liner you know that would allow me to do uh you know a more curvaceous shape to give it a little bit more uh just a little bit more you know flavor i guess to make it look a little bit more interesting but you know the, the mix and match of big and small rocks i think works pretty good and i didn't get too precious about doing perfect rock work in here because the idea is, is with all these little you know crevices in these rocks this is all going to get this is all going to planted about one plant per square foot and so I'll be able to plant, you know, there's even some, you know, liner and overlayment showing back here. I can, you know, plant to put a plant right here and it'll just cover all of this and fill in. Uh, another thing that I wish I'd done uh, a little differently, or I don't know that I'd done it differently, but I'm just not quite sure how I'm going to fix it yet is, or what I'm going to do about it is, 
Um, I had to build, you know, my lot slopes a little bit. So the high point is back there. The natural grade is back there. And then the low point was down here. So I had to build this, I had to build this up. So this is a retaining wall back here. I'm gonna try to get back there without falling in the pond. Let me see if I can come back here. I just built a sandbag filled with just native soil from the earth, or from the earth, from the lot back here. Stuff that I excavated, all built up back here. It works great. Uh, it's not the sturdiest wall you've ever seen in your life. It's certainly no retaining wall, but it doesn't have to hold anything back. All these rocks are basically freestanding, uh, and there's nothing on the backside for it to hold up. So it really just has to hold up the edge of the liner, about three inches of water, um, or six inches of water maybe. Let's see. But what that the problem that causes me is because it's a wall. I'm gonna have to figure out once this liner gets folded and I do the edge work over here, I'm gonna have this. I'm gonna have these white bags just kind of sitting here uh, that you'll be able to see probably from the deck when you're looking at here. And I don't think that's gonna look very good. So I'm gonna have to figure out a solution to make that look good. I think in the future when this uh, bamboo, which for all of you freaking out right now, this is a clumping bamboo that I studied very carefully before buying. So it's a, uh, it's a clumping bamboo that won't, you know, it doesn't run away. It has a kind of a genetic maximum in terms of diameter that I should be pretty safe with. Uh, once that fills in, it might cover it up and I might not notice it anymore. Or I have this idea that I could just, since it's native soil in these bags, I could slit the bags open on top and find some way to do just like a little drip irrigation inside the bag and just plant the bags up with something. I don't know if that'll work, but that's an idea I had. Okay, what else could I have, do I wish I'd done differently? Um, get out of my shadow here. You know, as they say, building waterfalls, these, these rocks right here will be one of the most uh, viewed angles of the pond. I'm not, not from this angle, but from over here where the patio is, the master bedroom uh, window. It'll become a patio door, I believe, in the future. Uh, and even from, the, even from the deck over here, everyone's gonna see these rocks. And I use little rocks and waterfalls look better when you use a few big rocks. And I did mostly use, you know, big rocks in the, in the major parts of the waterfall. But back here I use little rocks. Why did I do that? Because for some reason I decided when I was building this, uh, when I was building the filter that I wanted to hide the, the plumbing coming into it. So what I did, and uh, I'll link to uh, my other video where I showed how I did this. I used a bulkhead fitting, a DIY bulkhead fitting to come in through the liner. It's basically at ground level back here but it comes in through so it's all hidden the plumbing is hidden back here and it just comes in right through there um that is a future failure point and because it's a future failure point that uh, you know someday it, it might or could or maybe even probably will leak at some point in the future if i set a giant rock back here that means somebody like barney has to come back tear up my whole yard to come lift it out. Probably somebody even bigger than Barney to try to lift from from over here all the way over here. You have that have a very large machine, I think. And so I don't want to do that to my property once I'm done landscaping or to myself or my poor daughter who's been deprived of a backyard for like a year and a half now. Um, so I use small rocks. I use small rocks here so that if I need to, I can just by hand take this all apart get at the fitting that's leaking down there, do a patch, and put it back. Um, if I could do it again, I probably would just go over the liner with the pipe and it would be fine. I could find a way to disguise it with plants or more rocks or whatever. Um, but that's something that I would do differently. And then the only other thing that I want to talk about that I think the people in the koi world have really figured out and probably a lot of professional pond builders have figured out. I'm going to figure out how to get out of my shadow here. Is since that's, that's the valve for the, you know, that sends water, that splits the water between, you know, over here and down to the bottom of the filter, it's all the way over there. Why did I do that? If I ever need to change that, which I'm hoping I won't have to change it, uh, I hope, hopefully it'll be mostly set it and forget it. And if things slow down, I can, I'll just need to do like a filter clean or something. But if I ever need to adjust that, I've got to come get into the filter, walk through some water, and come down here, kneel down in all these bushes and, and you know, take this rock out and whatever. I just get my hands all wet and standing in water to, to, to make adjustments. If I had been a little bit smarter, I probably would have routed my plumbing so that it'd be over here or even had it, you know, outside the pond where you don't even have to get wet. 
That was a mistake I've made on a couple places uh, plumbing the whole pond, which I'm kind of scratching my head about how I'm going to solve this in the future. Uh, a lot of my uh, valve placements are, are not ideal, and I wish I'd done that differently. So those are the major pieces of the uh, of the puzzle it's not quite done yet but almost just a little bit of edging a little bit of plumbing and then we're going to turn it on and run the waterfall and i've been rambling for 10 minutes so hope you enjoyed it